Welcome back, everyone. I hope uh, the breaks aren't too short and people are getting some time to stretch in between. Uh, we now have our lightning poster sessions. Um, very, very brief talks, but, but at the same time, a nice way to see a bunch of information really quickly. Please don't forget to put um, questions into the chat as the speakers are going, especially in this lightning uh, round, you'll be on to the next uh, presentation before you know it. So with that, let's get started on our uh, lightning poster session. I am Marie Josiane Tama Isomba, a geriatrician in Cameroon. I will present geriatric syndromes in an urban elderly population in Cameroon. Despite a growing of its aging population, geriatric medicine is still neglected in sub-Saharan Africa. And our health systems are ill-prepared to cope with the needs of older adults, especially those with chronic medical conditions including HIV infection. The patterns of geriatric syndromes are poorly described in our setting. Thus, we aimed to determine the prevalence and correlates of common geriatric syndrome in our setting. We conducted a prospective study among people aged 55 and over by assessing common geriatric syndrome with validated tools. Our state population was mainly female and younger than that of Western countries and living with at least one chronic medical condition. Geriatric syndromes were highly prevalent and associated with several factors. We can refrain from having concern about older people with HIV since disability was associated with polypharmacy. The burden of geriatric syndrome is important in our setting and need to be identified, especially in aging people living with HIV. It is therefore important to conduct further studies to motivate our government to include geriatric assessment for people living with HIV in our city. Thank you. This is Ian McNichol with Gilead Sciences, and I'm pleased to be able to present the results of our polled analysis of VF-TAF in adults 65 years and older, week 48. 140 participants who met the inclusion criteria were included in this analysis with a median age of 68, 14% female, and 88% white. Primary endpoint at week 48 based on snapshot analysis show that 92% were virologically suppressed with a viral load less than 50 copies per mil. Zero participants had a detectable viral load and 8% had no virological data. Of those 11 participants, six participants were still on steady drug and had an undetectable viral load after week 48. In terms of tolerability, there were no grades three or four steady drug-related AEs. There were no steady drug-related serious AEs, though four participants did discontinue steady drug. So to conclude, switching to BFTAF is safe, effective, and well-tolerated in this population. High rates of virological suppression were at 92% with no virological failures. And there were no renal, bone, or hepatic AEs that resulted in discontinuation. These data support the use of BFTAF in adults 65 years and older who could benefit from a single small tablet with few drug drug interactions and an established safety profile. For further details, please see poster number 13. We do want to acknowledge and thank the participants, their partners, and families, and all the GS study investigators who contributed patients to this broad analysis. The study was funded by Gilead Sciences. Hello, I'm Stefano Rinaldi, postdoc in Dr. Savita Powers Lab at University of Miami. My project aims to identify molecular signatures of aging and vaccine response in HIV-infected individuals. To do that, we perform RNA-seq analysis on PBMCs collected before and seven days after influenza vaccination from a subset of participants previously enrolled in the FLORA study. The FLORA study is a previous study in our lab on the effect of aging and HIV on influenza response. Participants were divided in young and old based on their age. 
Using a last approach for data reduction, followed by generalized linear regression model, we identified a molecular signature able to discriminate the TOH group within HIV and LT. The PLSDA graph on top shows the separation of the two groups based on the identified signature, while the eight maps on the bottom shows the different gene expression within the selected groups. From this analysis, we found that HIV have a different molecular signature compared to LT. With LT model being centered on monocyte functionality, while in HIV, we found genes related to B cell activation and negative regulation of NK functionality. We applied the same approach to identify molecular signature associated with vaccine response using gene expression before vaccination and seven days after vaccination. In this way, we were able to generate a predictive and correlative signature of vaccine response. We found again that molecular signature in HIV were different from the healthy, but in this case, no responders in both groups show higher expression at time zero of a gene associated with immune activation. In conclusion, age predicting molecular signature were different between HIV and LT, while for signature predictive of response to influenza vaccination, we observed that despite being different, both signatures showed that the immune activation before vaccination is detrimental for vaccine response. Thank you. In this study, we wanted to address the question of how aging of the immune system is altered by chronic HIV infection. We used samples from the FLORA study, which was an influenza vaccination study to monitor flu responses in relation to age and HIV. We combined multiple data sets from pre-vaccination samples from 100 HIV-positive ART-treated adults and 100 age-matched healthy controls. The datasets consisted of PBMC-based flow cytometry and plasma-soluble marker detection that generated over 1,300 parameters, including phenotypic subsets of T and B cells, monocytes, and NK cells. The strategy we employed was to try and define a predictive model of aging in HIV-negative participants, and then apply the model to HIV-positive individuals and see how well it performed. And finally, to use age-associated parameters to predict response to flu vaccination. Spearman correlation analysis revealed 277 immune parameters in HIV-negative individuals and 491 in HIV-positive that correlated with age. 113 parameters overlapped between the two groups. Predictive modeling using age-associated parameters and lasso data reduction allowed us to define a 25-parameter model with greater than 70% predictive accuracy for age in the HIV-negative group. The model performed worse in HIV-positive individuals at 54% accuracy. Some of the individual parameters had different profiles in the HIV-positive group compared to HIV-negative. However, decreased CD38 expression on T cells with age was consistent in both groups. We found age-correlating parameters related to immune activation of T and B cells were predictive of response to the flu vaccine in all participants with greater than 75% accuracy. In conclusion, immune signature profiling could be used as an indicator of one's immunological age and may be useful for assessing responsiveness to other vaccines, including those against SARS-CoV-2. Good afternoon. I thank the organizers for the opportunity to summarize our poster, Association of Polyfunctional TMB Specific T-Cells with Cirrhosis in HIV Infected and Uninfected Men. Cytomicrovirus infection may contribute to the chronic inflammation associated with frailty. However, the relationship between polyfunctional CMV responsive T cells and the onset and the duration of frailty is unknown. To address this, we started 42 men in the max, including 22 virologically suppressed HIV positive and 20 HIV negative. Frailty was assessed by great frailty phenotype semi annually. Baseline production of IIF and gamma TNFR for an ILT by T cells in response to 19 CMV peptide pools was assessed by intracellular cytokine staining flow cytometry. The association between polyfunctional T cells and frailty was assessed by survival analysis. The left top panel shows that HIV inactive men in the highest tertiles of percentage of CD4 T cells producing only IF and gamma, as indicated by the blue line, progress to frailty significantly faster than those in the lower tertiles, as indicated by the red line. In the left lower panel, however, this association was still significant, but was reversed in HIV positive men. At the top right, HIV negative men with higher percentage of IF and gamma TNF alpha and IL to super producing 
CD8 T cells in the blue became frail more slowly than those with lower percentages of these cells in the red. At the bottom, they also reverted to non-frail faster. Other results are in the poster. The fact that two subsets of TMV's responsive T cells predicted becoming and remaining frail in HIV negative and HIV positive men suggests that TMV induced inflammation contributes to the onset and the maintenance of frailty. Mechanisms may differ between HIV negative and HIV positive men. Further studies are needed. And thanks to the colleagues who contributed to this work. My name is Howell Jones and I'm training in geriatric medicine in London in the United Kingdom and I have a special interest in healthy ageing in people living with HIV. I'm going to introduce some of our preliminary data from the recently established Sage Frailty Clinic within the HIV service at the Royal Free Hospital in North London. Today we have conducted nine clinics and assessed 35 patients with a current format of two cycles of three times 30 minute appointments per clinic. The first of the three assessments is a joint medical review by a HIV physician and geriatrician. The second assessment is a therapy review by an occupational therapist and a physiotherapist. And the third assessment is by a clinical nurse specialist and specialist pharmacist. The sample was heterogeneous with an age range between 51 and 91, though it was predominantly white and male and had a median freed frailty score of 4. We assessed the reports from these clinic appointments to identify unique aspects of frailty and we identified 18 areas of frailty within these appointments with the most common being low mood, memory problems, falls risk, urinary symptoms and pain. From this data we were able to identify that the patient group was heterogeneous and not all patients required to see all specialists within the clinic and that the clinic length of 90 minutes led to high levels of patient fatigue. We also noted that there were high levels of effective symptoms within the sample, meaning that many patients were either unable or unwilling to engage in the intervention suggested by the medical team or the therapist due to these symptoms. This has allowed us to make some modifications and due to a pause from COVID-19, we are planning to relaunch the service in November 2020 with some adjustments and have ongoing data collection to aid further development of the service with the aim to improve the health and well-being of older people ageing with HIV. Okay, wonderful, quick talks. Thank you very much. Uh, there are a few questions uh, in the chat, so I'm going to uh, start with Dr. McNichol, um, which uh, Dr. Latender asked, um, did you evaluate interactions between age, sex, and race, ethnicity? Uh, for, yeah, thank you, David. Uh, for, regarding Scott's question, we did not. It was simply a polled analysis of 140 participants uh, trying to ensure that the use of BFTF was safe and effective in the older population. Okay, thank you. Um, another uh, question from uh, Dr. Latender, I think this is for Dr. Rinaldi. Um, what are the implications of earlier aging on monocytes among people with HIV compared to health, healthy controls? Yes, um, thank you. That's really an interesting question. Um, unfortunately, the, our RNA seq was done on total PBMC, so we can't discriminate exactly um, how monocytes are altered in HIV. Uh, positive and negative uh, individuals. But um, the possible implication, of course, is that monocytes being altered have um, issues with um, presenting uh, antigens, for example. And that's an issue that is really well studied right now, especially with the COVID situation. So um, it's definitely something that we need to explore more in details. For now, is we are just the observation that um, monocytes are um, seems to be really important also um, for um, aging in HIV. Wonderful, thank you. And in terms of chair's prerogative, Dr. Asamba, um, could you tell us some of the, the challenges that you're experiencing in Cameroon in terms of uh, optimizing care for older individuals uh, with HIV? Okay, uh, thank you. In fact, um, the prevalence of HIV is, is very high in, in our setting, and uh, 
uh, people age 50 and above account for more than 20% of all uh, people living with HIV in our country. Um, although a lot is, is done to address the needs of people living with HIV, we can refrain uh, from having concerns uh, about those who are older uh, because, you know, geriatric medicine is still at its beginning and, and uh, we need um, to conduct further studies uh, in community dwelling and uh, in hospitalized patients uh, to, 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 uh, to raise awareness uh, of our local authorities to concerning the rising burden of age-related conditions, especially for, for those people living with, with HIV. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you. Um, and Dr. De Armas, uh, there is a question for you. Um, what are the implications of differences in aging-related immune responses to vaccination uh, of people with HIV uh, who may have a future SARS-CoV-2? Yeah, that's a really interesting question, one we're certainly trying to look at. Um, what we found so far is that responders and non-responders, whether they're HIV positive or HIV negative, we can kind of tease those out with our signatures. Um, and so we'll have to, you know, do more studies to see for the SARS-CoV-2 vaccines, whether those same signatures can be applied or if there's maybe something uh, additional that we can use. Okay, wonderful, thank you. And for those of you who presented on frailty, I'm wondering if you could just speak uh, 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 on those things that we can do to combat frailty in our patients. Dr. So I guess I can comment a lot. Uh, so since uh, our findings is that the CMV specific T cell response can predict um, the frailty. So, and also like there's a study showing that uh, using the gancyclovir to suppress the CMV um, replication like in HIV positive patients uh, can lead to decreasing immune activation. So if um, our findings are, can be validated in a much larger cohort, we'll probably try to see if those like drugs that uh, suppress the CMV replication could help with um, preventing frailty, um, like the chronic inflammation and frailty. Wonderful. I suppose what I would say is that the most important thing that we are finding is that uh, most of the people who are aging in our, in our care world are living with HIV and HIV may not actually be the biggest part in their frailty and to really just look at them as a whole and to work in a really multidisciplinary way with other health professionals, other specialists, therapists, pharmacists, as we've already seen through the other presentations, to really give them holistic care. And the challenges that we're having here in the UK are similar to what we already had in the opening, which is um, access to appropriate funding and identification that older people with HIV are under-researched and under-thought uh, about group and commissioning and really upskilling both our HIV physicians who are perhaps not as used to looking after older people and also teaching our geriatricians that HIV will become a, hopefully, a condition of the elderly rather than of the young. Wonderful, thank you. And another question for Dr. Rinaldi. Um, what may be the implications of aging-related immune response to vaccination on the durability of childhood vaccinations? You know, are we going to need to revaccinate um, as people move through the lifespan? This is a really interesting question. Um, we haven't looked for um, the possible loss of um, memory response in terms of you know longitudinal studies are uh, looking for um decline of the um of this memory response in elderly individuals uh is it theoretically possible that an increase in response could increase the turnover of the cells and for such reason uh can um speed up the process of losing memory cells and in this uh situation there can be the needs for our pre-vaccination but that's definitely something really interesting that um, we should look into it more in detail. 
Okay, wonderful. Well, I thank all of the speakers for their quick and uh, coherent presentations. Uh, this concludes our lightning poster session number one. Don't forget that all these posters are, are on the portal and people can view them um, as well. So this isn't your only opportunity to learn about this work. So thank you all. Uh, appreciate it. We're moving on to lightning poster session two.